Welcome to episode two of Creel Parametric for SOLIDWORKS users, and we're going to cover five more things that SOLIDWORKS users should know before they jump into Creel Parametric. First off, file names. I'm going to create a brand new part using the new icon. First thing that you might notice when you see the new dialog box is that we have a bunch more model and object types in Creel Parametric than SOLIDWORKS. The default is part, and another big difference is that you're going to specify the name of the part or the assembly or the drawing up front. In SOLIDWORKS, you specify the name when you save it. In Creel Parametric, you specify the name when you create the object. Now I'm going to call this my structure frame. The second thing that I want to point out, in SOLIDWORKS, you can use spaces, commas, all sorts of different characters in the name. That's not true for Creole Parametric. And here's the reason why. When Pro Engineer first came out back in the late 1980s, it was designed for DOS based and Unix based systems. And Unix based systems had a restriction on characters that could be in the name. And those restrictions still hold true today. So that's why I'm using an underscore instead of a space in the name. Now I will click the OK button and my part is created. So now let's talk about the second thing that SOLIDWORKS users should know. If you take a look at the interface, up at the top of the screen, we have a bunch of different tabs, but you do not see a sketch tab. One difference is that in Creo Parametric, sketching is a mode, it's not a tab. So if I want to create a new sketch, you can start off by clicking on the sketch icon in the ribbon and then pick the plane that you want to sketch on. Now I'm gonna click the sketch button to get into sketch mode. And so there are a few steps there. There is a dialog box that opened up. I'm going to do an entire video on sketching. For this video, I'm just gonna create some geometry. Let me create a rectangle about yay big. Here you can see I get some dimensions on the screen. Let me change some of these different values in here. And I'm just going to create a couple of other additional lines. Let me do this and this. And let's see, let's make this dimension here 120. You'll notice that you get some dimensions on the screen. Again, I'm going to explain all this stuff about sketching in another video. The point that I want to make is that sketching is a mode. Here you can see that we are on the sketch tab right now. Once I hit the check mark or use the right mouse button to get to the check mark, I'm back in part mode. Let me turn off the display of my datum planes. And so you can see the sketch that I have created. So again, the big difference there is that sketching is a mode that you enter into. Third thing that you should know, Let's talk about creating features. Let's say I want to create a brand new sweep feature. When I click on the command, I'm going to get a dashboard that opens up. In SOLIDWORKS, you get a property manager that opens up where I have the model tree over here. In this case, we get a dashboard. One thing that I recommend if you are a brand new user, the first time that you get into a command, just take a moment to read all the different icons. If you are in an older version of Creo Parametric, you might not have the text that explains all the different icons. If you just hover your mouse over a command or an option or a button, you're gonna get a tooltip that explains what that button does. So just take a moment to familiarize yourself with the different buttons that are on the dashboard plus the different tabs. Click on the different tabs and see what the different options that you have on the tabs are. And so I'm creating a sweep feature. Let me select a curve to use as my trajectory for the sweep. And even though you get the dashboard that opens up, and I just recommended that you take a moment to read the dashboard, I recommend that when you are creating your different features, you concentrate on the graphics area. You should spend most of your time looking in this area. Also, you have a lot of functionality from the right mouse button, and that's where you should go to for commands first. So for example, I have the mini toolbar. There are a bunch of different icons over here. This one creates the sweep as a solid feature. This one creates it as a surface feature. 
and let me hit the right mouse button again. Here's where you can change between, say, a simple sweep and a variable section sweep. You can see that we have a bunch of options here from the right mouse button menu. If I want to get into the sketch for this particular feature, I am just going to click on it from the mini toolbar. Another difference, we'll cover features in another video. In SOLIDWORKS, if you're creating a sweep feature, you would create the trajectory and the section first, or you could use a circular section. So creating sweep is a little bit different in Creo Parametric. I'm gonna use the right mouse button to get to the sketching tools that I want. Let me make it about so big and then change this dimension here. And now I'm happy with my sketch. Let me again concentrate on the graphics area. I'm using the right mouse button to get to my check mark. And here you can see the sweep feature that I am creating. And in order to complete this feature, you can use the check mark from the dashboard or middle mouse button is the same thing as the check mark. And there you can see that I have created my first feature in here. So again, when you're creating different features, the biggest thing that I can stress is to concentrate on the dashboard. Okay, for point number four that I want to make, I want to talk about the UI a little bit more. I'm going to create another sweep. Let me just use this particular segment of the curve. And once again, I'm going to make this as a surface feature and I'm just going to create a simple circle to use for the shape. Again, I just want to create another feature that I have in here to use. And let me once again get out of the mode. You'll notice that time I just hit the check mark in the ribbon just because I did it out of habit. But anyhow, there I have a second feature created. And let's say I want to perform an operation to this feature like trimming it. Let's use the trim command. And so there's a lot of functionality in Creole Parametric. And one complaint that I hear from a lot of people is that sometimes there's too much functionality or it's, it's too complex for people. And I think that's actually kind of bogus. I think when people bring up those different complaints, well, they just don't realize everything that Creole Parametric is capable of doing. And with more functionality comes more complexity in terms of the different options that you have available to you. But regarding the user interface, again, I'd mentioned that you definitely want to read the dashboards. You want to read any right mouse button menus that you use. But another thing that you want to pay attention to as a brand new user is a part of the interface called the message area. I'm going to grab this bottom bar and make it a lot longer. And the message area down here is where Creole Parametric is having an ongoing conversation with you. And you might want to make this message area bigger. I definitely recommend whenever you get into trouble with Creole Parametric, the first thing that you should do is go to the message area and read what Creole Parametric has been saying to you. There might be an error or a warning that Creole was giving you down here. If you want to, you can go to your options and there's configuration editor here. I'm going to scroll down. There is a config.pro option called visible message lines. Since I'm an experienced user, I have this set to one. If you are a brand new user, you might want to set this to a value of four just so that you see more lines down at the bottom of the screen. So definitely, again, read the message area as a new user of Creo Parametric. And the fifth and final thing that I want to mention in this video is making changes to different features. And so, for example, let me select this sketch. If I click on it with the left mouse button, I'm going to get a mini toolbar. The very first two icons that you have in here are probably the most important icons that you have in Creo Parametric because you will use them a lot. They are edit dimensions and edit definition. So edit dimensions, well, like the command sounds, it's going to show you the different dimensions associated with a feature. And if you want to change that dimension, you can double click on it and type in the new value, hit the enter key, it updates on the screen. You'll notice it also opens up a dimension tab 
in the ribbon where you can do a whole bunch of other different things to configure the dimension. But if you want to then get out of the dimension tab, hey, just click on the background of the screen a couple times to update the model. You could also use the regenerate command, which is the keyboard shortcut of control G. If you're wondering, hey, why isn't regenerate control R? Well, that's because you have a repaint command and the repaint command has the keyboard shortcut of control R. But anyhow, that was edit dimensions. Let me select the sweep feature. Here's the edit definition command. If you know anything about the concept of design intent, design intent reflects the fact that you spend more of your time updating and maintaining models rather than their initial creation. And so you're going to use edit definition a lot in order to update your different models. So in this particular situation, when I went to edit definition, it brings up the dashboard that was used to create the feature. Oh yeah, by the way, if you're wondering why is it called the dashboard, if it's up at the top of the screen, when the dashboard was first introduced back in Wildfire 1.0, it was down at the bottom of the screen, so it made sense to call it the dashboard back then. But then ergonomic studies showed that people were spending too much time tilting their head down, and it made more ergonomic sense to put it up at the top of the screen, but it's still called the dashboard. But anyhow, you have the dashboard that was used to create the feature initially, and you have your right mouse button functionality that you can use to make changes, like making this a solid feature instead of a surface feature. Let me hit the check mark. You'll notice that the feature turned gray because that is my default color for solid geometry. The surface feature is still in this light bluish color. So there you have edit dimensions for changing dimensional values and edit definition for changing anything about the feature. Here we have this failed feature. One thing I can do is suppress it in order to get it out of the model temporarily. And if I suppress it, you can always select it and then use resume in order to bring it back. And if I want to try to fix it, I could use edit definition, which again brings up the dashboard and gives me all the different right mouse button functionality that I had before. I'm going to cancel out of there. Or if you have a failure, hey, sometimes you just end up deleting the feature that is failing. So there you have it, five more things that SOLIDWORKS users should know about Creo Parametric before jumping into Creo Parametric.